Episode 102. Rex stronger than Stephen? Blair pulled at the hem of her clothes to cover her body and nudged Roger's waist with her foot. Don't you have to go to the fields? Go quickly. Roger chuckled and edged closer to Blair to kiss her. He then ran out of the bedroom before she could flare up at him. Blair covered her mouth as she watched Roger jump down from the fence. Roger! Blair shouted. She quickly stood up and ran outside to look. She could only see an agile figure jump along the wall and quickly reach the ground in the rain. Roger stood in the yard and looked up at Blair on the top floor. The blood on his face was quickly washed away by the rain. I'm going. Roger waved. Silly cat. Blair playfully scolded him under her breath as she waved at him. Blair's clothes were long, and her smooth legs looked as clean as parasol trees that had been stripped clean of their bark. The rain washed away a drop of blood that ran down the female's leg, filling the air with her sweet scent. Stephen's tongue flickered. Damn you, leopard. How could you just jump down like that? You scared me to death. Blair sighed. She turned around and noticed the abnormal look in Stephen's eyes, then followed his gaze and looked down. <gasps> it's flowing out again! Blair cried out in surprise. She awkwardly walked back into the house under Stephen's gaze. I should just sit down. He did the right thing. If he walked down the stairs, the tiger beast man would notice the smell. Stephen said as his gaze followed her every movement. Blair nodded. She knelt on the bed and was about to pick up her soiled pants to cover her body with when Stephen moved closer to her. His long, fire-red hair cascaded over Blair's body like silk. As the wind blew, it casually brushed against her face and tickled her. Feeling pressured, Blair used her hands to support herself and looked up at Stephen's face. Stephen? Blair asked nervously. She could seemingly hear the thumping of her own heart as a cold and slender hand held her face and his face moved closer. You're so beautiful, Stephen said. Blair's heart suddenly beat faster. The voice was bewitching, and she heard it saying, I love you, in her head. This wasn't just her wishful thinking. Stephen's expressions told her that that was what he was trying to say. Just then, she felt a warm drop of liquid on her thigh. Blair's eyes shot open, and she hastily pushed Stephen away. No, not now. The drop of blood was about to land on the animal skin bed sheets. Blair quickly avoided Stephen and stood up, then bent down and wiped away the blood on her body with her pants. Her beautiful eyebrows looked like caterpillars as they furrowed together. Damn you, periods. The little snakes had somehow made their way to Blair's feet and were looking up at her. Blair leaned towards Stephen. Hey, Stephen, do you still have memories of your childhood? Stephen glared coldly at the baby snakes. Shocked, the baby snakes' bodies stiffened as they turned around and fled. You're not allowed to enter this territory ever again, Stephen said in a deep, threatening voice. The young snakes fled into the empty room next door, and no sound came from them. They can remember things now, right? Blair asked again. Stephen replied, Of course. Blair said decisively, It's time to let them live separately from us. Stephen took the animal skin in Blair's hands and covered up her legs, then carried her to sit in the nest. Blair could sense Stephen's desire and sat docile on his legs, not daring to move. We lone beast men are commonly not brought up by our parents. That's why we have the inherited legacy memories to help save our lives. They are my children, and when they enter the mature phase, They'll awaken memories related to mates. The two of us will be the clearest memories they have. Blair's expression immediately turned strange. 
She looked at Stephen's face for a while, then shook her head vigorously. These young snakes wouldn't grow up with an Oedipus complex, right? If they were all as domineering and stubborn as Stephen were, she really didn't dare to imagine how things would be. I'd like to let them go when they get a little bigger, Stephen said in an emotionless tone, the depth of his deep eyes hiding faint but persistent killing intent. Blair fell silent. Stephen gently stroked her head, not rushing her for an answer, but saying, Don't blame me. Blair knew that Stephen was being serious, and she turned anxious, saying, We can let them go when they've matured, and then only keep in contact with them after they found their mate. They have feelings for you. In addition to the disturbances they have from my memories, they'll definitely return to look for you immediately. You are forcing me to kill them. Stephen said ruthlessly. Blair's face turned pale as she looked toward a small door in the bedroom. A few young snakes probed their heads out and were sneaking looks at them. When they saw Blair looking over, they flicked out their tongues, hissing away. There wasn't the usual energetic tone in their voices. They must have understood, Blair thought to herself. Then we must treat them better before we let them go. Blair bore with the ache in her heart as she said. Stephen smiled in an indulging manner. All right. Roger ran to the fields and saw from afar that there was a muscular tiger beast man standing in their field. You've come too. Rex didn't turn, but could discern who it was by his footsteps. The seedlings that had grown to be one palm in length were soaked halfway by the rainwater and Rex was using a basin to scoop water out. Some of the water that was scooped out would still seep back into the pit. Many beastmen were doing the same, their faces filled with joy. They knew that the seedlings would grow very quickly when there was ample rainwater. What they didn't know was that there was going to be an impending storm. Roger let out a snort. To think that he had snatched his job he was too detestable. Thinking of Blair, who was back at home and in heat, Roger's mood immediately improved as he chatted with Rex leisurely. The tiger beast men have informed you, right? Rex didn't reply and continued to work quietly. Roger also jumped into the field, scooping water out. Stephen said there's going to be heavy rain soon. Snakes are very sensitive to the weather, and he said that the rain is going to be extremely heavy. Rex paused in his actions and looked toward the seedlings. If there's more rainwater, the seedlings will be in danger. I'm also worried about the same thing, Roger said. Rex frowned and gave it some thought before tossing the stone basin to the side. He walked out of the field and let out a roar. Roar! All the beast men looked toward Rex and quickly ran over. Tiger King, why did you call for us? A voice from the crowd rang out to ask. The rainwater drenched Rex's white hair, but it couldn't wash away his powerful aura. His tiger gaze glanced out, and all the beast men immediately turned silent, leaving only the sound of the rain and the wind. A heavy storm is coming soon. I recommend everyone to fence up your fields and not let the water flow in. Rex said in a deep voice. That can't be. The Ape King didn't mention anything. If we let out all the water and the storm doesn't come, we'll still need to scoop water from the river later on. Some doubtful voices rang out from the crowd, but immediately disappeared after Rex glanced over. If the Ape King was in his shoes, he'd definitely be able to convince everyone with his strong persuasive skills. However, as a fighter who hunted for food, Rex only needed a single glance to get people to submit. Water can be filled at any time, but there's only one batch of seedlings. You guys can't afford to lose them. After saying that, Rex moved his gaze from the beast men to the field. Roger, stop scooping the water. Let's dig a trench to let the water out. Roger and Stephen had lived together under the same roof for half a year, and he had great trust in Stephen's senses. Stephen liked water 
but even the heavy rainy season last year didn't cause him to have any change. However, this time around, he clearly revealed a pleased expression. This showed that the impending rain would be even heavier than the heavy rainy season. Roger tossed the stone base into the side, took on his beast form, and started digging at a corner. When the beast men saw that even Rex's field was being dug open, they started to tilt toward believing him. They returned to their own fields for their own preparation. The tiger beast men naturally followed Rex's method, digging trenches and building up a fence on the side. However, the beast men from other tribes chose to take a more conservative method and merely used soil that was mixed with crushed stones to surround their fields. The river was located in a lower terrain, so as the trenches were dug toward its direction, the water would just flow out. After all the water was let out, the light rain continued to drizzle down, so the seedlings wouldn't grow slowly due to a lack of water. The seedlings in the spacious wheat field also grew very well. There was nothing to worry about. After work in the fields was done, Rex planned on going to hunt. It was his turn to hunt today. Roger changed into his human form and said, I'll go. Before Rex could give a reply, he turned into his beast form and ran off. Rex looked doubtfully at Roger's back for a moment, then washed his hands with the rainwater and headed for the city of beastmen. Blair! Rex had just arrived at the main bedroom's door when he instantly sensed an intense killing intent. He quickly jumped away. An instant later, the spot where Rex had been standing earlier was replaced by Stephen, while Rex squatted on the fence. Stephen glared at Rex, no longer sporting his casual attitude. Rex was a lot stronger than the Tiger King. You're fighting again. Blair quickly put on her pants, walked out, and pretended to be angry as she glared toward the back of Stephen's head. She then said to Rex apologetically, Rex, don't be angry. This is how Stephen is. Next time, just make some sounds when you walk to let us know that you're coming. Rex's nose twitched. Who is injured? No, this is... Rex turned to look at Blair, then his gaze dropped down. Blair held on to her pants. She didn't need to look down to sense where Rex was looking. She smiled sheepishly, feeling helpless inside. No one was able to understand such awkwardness unless they experienced it themselves. Stephen walked over to stand in front of Blair, blocking Rex's assessing view. The two strong fighters looked at each other without saying a word, with intense battling sparks flying between them. <laughs> 